Good evening and welcome to another informative, exciting episode of Health Check right here on Hope TV where you look and live. My name is Kerry Kagiri. I want to ask you this evening, how are you doing? Are you well? How are you holding up with the current situation? Well, right here, we hope to keep you informed. Today, we talk about digestive disorders. Mm hmm. You're wondering what could those be? We'll be talking about that. With me in studio is our nutritionist. She's back due to public demand. <laughs> Hello, Christine. Hi, Kerry. How are you doing? Fine, thank you. It's nutritionist and dietitian. Yes, nutritionist and dietitian. Okay. Uh, stroke or end? You put a stroke. Okay. You now, as you practice, when we went for classes, when we graduated, in those previous years, we were nutritionist stroke dietitian, but right now the youngins have the option of being either a nutritionist or a dietitian. Okay. Yeah. So you're both. Yes. Thank God. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Christine Gitao. Yes. Karibu sana. And Asante. with us, a gastroenterologist. I can tell you, I've practiced that word starting yesterday night. I started practicing. Karibu sana. Thank you. Introduce yourself to Thank our you, audience. My name is uh, Dr. Steven Onyango. I am as uh, you say a gastroenterologist mm -hmm. which means i deal with diseases of the digestive system mm -hmm. yes and we can just start with talking about the coronavirus i mean it's done so much impact to us and also you could give your advice to those who are tuned in on how you have managed and you're looking this good on screen i'll start with you dr Ray. yeah corona coming to corona there's nothing really much to add to what the government uh, is directing yes. so what i would encourage uh, the viewers to do is to follow the government directives mm -hmm. Keep social distance put on your mask when required mm. uh, stay home when we, the government says stay home and and so on mm -hmm. yes yeah. patients are not coming enough to hospital can you affirm them that it's safe that you are you've sanitized everything they should come yes we have taken precautions yes. in in the health institutions mm -hmm. and uh, what we are doing now is when you come we do the there's, there's a specific protocol that we use mm -hmm. so we check we check your temperature we take a small history mm -hmm. we try to assess the, are you at risk of having the covid mm -hmm. coronavirus mm -hmm. and if so we direct you to the correct place so we are uh, right now encouraging that if you are unwell and you need to come to hospital, you come. But if you are somebody who, for example, that we have been following up and it is not really urgent for you to come, mm -hmm. now is not the time to come. We can speak on the phone. Okay. We are introducing something called telemedicine mm -hmm. to sort of uh, maintain that social distancing. So I can uh, renew your prescription on the phone. Wow. Or, uh, I can renew your prescription on email. <laughs> But that is for somebody who I know I've been following up. Okay. If you're very sick, there's nothing to prevent you from going to the hospital. The necessary precautions are in place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. That's mm -hmm. our doctor. And Christine, how has this affected you? And how are you oh. doing so far? Uh, uh, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Actually, <laughs> I, I am doing well. Uh -huh. But that comes with a lot of intentional, positive mindset. Mm -hmm. Always say, have joy. It does not really have to matter what is happening around you, mm -hmm. but make sure you cultivate joy, mm -hmm. cultivate peace of mind, make sure you take time to meditate, make sure you take time to love. Mm -hmm. I think I'm very big on love. So make sure you take time to love and to meditate because that keep, keeps you in that space where no matter what is happening around you, you cannot be moved. Mm -hmm. mm. Wow. Yeah. Awesome. We are looking forward to getting all your messages. Any questions you may have, you can already start texting us. And our text line is open. It's triple two three two. That's a text line. We're looking forward to hearing from you. Our nutritionist is in studio. Our nutritionist slash dietitian and our gastroenterologist. And we'll go right into it. Daktari, what are digestive disorders? Okay. So, carry digestive disorder disorders are diseases of the digestive system. Mm -hmm. and the digestive system is the, the passage of food, the where the food passes all the way from the mouth mm -hmm. to the anus, and mm -hmm. it includes the liver, the gallbladder, and your pancreas. So any disease affecting that system, mm -hmm. the esophagus, stomach, small intestine, large intestine, gallbladder, liver, pancreas, those we call uh, digestive disorders. Can you just name a couple? So digestive disorders uh, are very many. Mm -hmm. That's why it's a whole specialty. The whole spe I know, <laughs> yeah. digestive disorders. So just, Most uh, common maybe. Yeah, so the common ones are peptic ulcer disease, mm -hmm. hyperacidity, mm -hmm. what uh, in common language we call hyperacidity. 
we have uh, various infections that can infect your digestive so especially in our environment mm -hmm. we have unfortunately cancers they, they they are quite common in the digestive system mm -hmm. And we have what we, uh, we call inflammatory disorders. Wow. Yeah. So some of the, the ones we're going to highlight today, acid reflux, mm -hmm. H. pylori, hey, which I've gotten, and stomach ulcers. Mm -hmm. We'll be talking about that and much more. If you've been affected by any of the above, you can go ahead and uh, message us any questions you might be going through. Our nutritionist in studio, nutrition mm -hmm. plays a huge role in every aspect. Exactly. In this particular aspect, what would you highlight? Oh my goodness, where do we start? Mm -hmm. The doctor would tell you that the gut, the gut area is considered as the second brain. So you have two brains. Wow. Your brain in your head and the brain, your stomach. That's why they say, I have a gut feeling. I have a yeah. gut feeling. <laughs> exactly. And that's exactly it. Because whatever you eat will affect the kinds of hormones your body is producing. It will affect the kind of nutrients that you're absorbing, which in turn affects everything else around you. Mm -hmm. So you really cannot say that you're treating just a gut disorder. When, you, when you're handling the gut, in essence, you're treating the whole body. Would you say that nutrition is responsible for all and most of digestive disorders? Oh my goodness, that would be... No, it's a very broad statement. It's a very broad it's statement. It's a very broad statement. Okay. For example, if you're talking about the cancers, mm -hmm. you find that there are those nutrition and environmental factors, but okay. that is not just it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Dactari, causes. Yeah. What are some of the causes of these uh, digestive disorders? Oh, yeah, that's a broad question, Kerry. Mm -hmm. Because the digestive diseases are so many and there are different causes. So let's take, for example, peptic ulcer disease. Can we go to the specific conditions? Like, as, okay, let's start with acid, acid. reflux. So acid reflux, uh, is, is that means uh, by description yes. that whatever content is in your stomach is backing up into your esophagus, mm -hmm. which is not designed to hold that. And you feel pain, you discomfort. You feel pain and uh, heartburn, heartburn and uh, discomfort mm -hmm. uh, in, in your chest. Mm -hmm. So the, this happens uh, for many reasons. The biggest risk factors that uh, we know of that can uh, lead to this include obesity. If you're obese, there's pressure on your stomach mm. and that pushes up the acid. Mm -hmm. And then uh, your diet also matters. If you drink a lot of alcohol, and uh, you smoke a lot, mm -hmm. and uh, if you're taking a lot of very acidic food, very spicy food, food with a lot of fat in it, mm -hmm. And uh, also people who take a lot of coffee, it eases, the, the, it makes the valve in uh, your esophagus loose and the, the food in content in your stomach backs up. Mm. So those are some of the risk factors for acid reflux. Can I just ask in the same line, is this the same thing people call as feeling bile or that's a different thing altogether? Yeah, bile, you know, when somebody tells you I'm feeling bile, you have to ask them what exactly do you mean? What exactly? <laughs> different people. <laughs> you have beef with someone. <laughs> mean different things okay yeah but uh, bile uh, well i don't know uh, for me you have to tell me specifically what you mean what you're you feeling say, yeah what you're feeling okay because uh, for reflux for example i don't usually associate with bile bile is lower down in the gastrointestinal okay. system okay okay so people come to me and they tell me i'm feeling heart pain and uh, I feel like the food is coming back up, mm -hmm. or I can't swallow very well, mm -hmm. or I am having uh, excessive salivation. Those are the things that guide me and I suspect, okay, this could be reflux. Reflux, yeah. okay. A mm -hmm. um, nutritionist, mm -hmm. what are some of the things that many people can do to actually avoid this? Number one, as Dr. Harry said, mm -hmm. avoid smoke. Don't smoke. Stop Don't smoking. Smoke. Stop smoking. Stop, Stop smoking. smoking, yes. Mm -hmm. Do not overindulge mm -hmm. in alcohol, mm -hmm. all right? Uh, Take less caffeine. So mm -hmm. a lot of us tend to take coffee and coffee is an irritant. Anything with caffeine is an irritant. Eat your meals regularly. All right. And then the other thing is do not overindulge. You know, sometimes, especially when we see a lot of food and it is nice food, we want to put it all in our stomachs. Mm -hmm. And again, avoid food that is too, spi too spicy, too fatty. Mm -hmm. And this is key, especially when you have reflux, avoid lying down immediately after you eat, mm -hmm. right? We have this habit, you, you finish eating, now you feel like taking a nap. So give yourself about an hour, sit upright, enjoy your life, watch TV, read a book, mm -hmm. then lie down. So it gives your body time to 
now to start off the process of digestion so things are not coming back up mm -hmm. and sometimes the reflux would be very common during pregnancy so you know that there's that hyper acidity of pregnancy mm -hmm. so again take small frequent meals so that you don't over exact your gi your gas your tract <laughs> yeah okay 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 that's great thank you so much for your questions They're already coming in on triple two three two it seems this is a very close um kind of topic to everybody can we go to h pylori but also we'll then go to all the symptoms for all of them together okay yeah. so you can start by explaining maybe what is h pylori so h pylori is a bacteria mm -hmm. it's a form of a germ which is very common in our environment and we catch it by fecal, what we call fecal oral in medicine. That mm -hmm. means you catch it through the mouth. Mm -hmm. So your contaminated hands or water or food and it gets into your stomach and it lives there. Wow. So it's a bacteria which lives in the stomach of a human being. Yeah, and uh, it's a very, very common thing here in our country. Mm -hmm. uh, 50, about 50 to 80 percent of our population are H. pylori positive. Mm -hmm. So it's something we live with. And it is uh, associated also with the socioeconomic status. Mm -hmm. So you find that uh, the poorer countries, the more H. pylori they have. Mm -hmm. In the West, maybe 10, 5, 10 percent of people have H. pylori. Mm -hmm. Here, because of our overcrowding, we have uh, a lot of H. pylori. What are some of the symptoms and signs that you can tell with someone with H. pylori? Because someone might be watching and, and probably they even have no idea. Yeah, so it's important to note that uh, H. pylori is because it's so it's very common here mm -hmm. but it doesn't cause symptoms in everybody because a lot of the one of the problems that i have many times in my office is people come and they have uh, whatever symptom and they tell me this is h pylori <laughs> but it's because it's so common it, it's not always that h pylori is what is causing okay. the problem but the symptom h pylori what it does is that uh, it causes pain mm -hmm. or discomfort in the upper part of the abdomen mm -hmm what many people will call ulcers. Mm -hmm. So you feel like you have ulcers mm -hmm. and you may feel bloated and you might feel a burning sensation after you eat. And a lot of times uh, this is associated with H. pylori. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's the main symptom that it causes. But uh, we have a problem with the population because people come with diarrhea, they're constipated, they said my H. pylori was positive. But it was positive because it's very common here. That's true. And uh, you must treat this H. pylori. This is a problem. And it's very difficult to convince them that uh, you have another problem. You have H. pylori, yes, but you have this other problem which you need to deal with. I like that's very interesting. I'm always, when I go to the doctor, I'm never telling the doctor, I'm like, this is what I'm feeling. What do you think it is? But your patients yeah, yeah. are special. We love them. Yeah. For you, yeah. how can we avoid? Because I think that's, that's, that's going to be the main question we're going to be asking all the time right uh -huh, here. Uh -huh. H. pylori. H. pylori, first things first, hygiene. Mm -hmm. So Dr. Reyes said it is bacteria. Mm -hmm. It is a bacteria. So one of the things we need to do wash our hands when we handle food we need to clean our food mm -hmm. cook our food especially in our setting we do not we should not be eating raw food so make sure you cook make sure as much as you can eat at home so the next thing would be sometimes when you feel the symptoms number one um, you hear people being told drink milk mm -hmm. milk would be good for h pylori if you have the diagnosis but it is not very good if you have hyperacidity all right. Mm. So if you have hyperacidity and then you drink milk, the milk goes into your stomach, uh, is digested, and then there's more acid in your stomach. So it is not working. What is you. usually the help for that? Because I've, I've had this a lot and, and we'll be dispelling myths mm. shortly. Mm. Mm -hmm. Someone saying, oh, I'm feeling this, maziwa. you know, it's normally yeah. the first thing. Mm -hmm. And as you've said, I just found out that recently. Mm -hmm. So what is it? I've heard the alternative is yogurt, it but that's even worse. <laughs> <laughs> yogurt is life for everything but then at at the point where you have your hyperacidity mm -hmm. especially if it is frequent first things first have you had these symptoms more than twice thrice tafadhali or nadaktari see a doctor mm -hmm. <laughs> no that's the, the key thing mm -hmm. you no know, a lot of the time we have these symptoms that we think because they are not life threatening I am not killing over, I then I sh it's not necessary. Mm -hmm. If you have hyperacidity, maybe every week for the last one month, why are you not going to see your gastroenterologist? Mm -hmm. So the next thing now, when you're diagnosed, we give you something that is called a bland diet. This is something we also give to people anytime you have acute symptoms, like symptoms that have just come. Mm -hmm. So we give you time to rest your gut. So you'll be eating more 
food that boiled. is boiled, mm. food wow. that is mm. steamed with little spices, little oil so that you give your stomach time to heal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Dr. Ray, would you comment on the same? What is that first emergency uh, solution sorry. for one when they are feeling the... The acidity. Yes. Mm. Yeah, it, it depends. In my own experience, um, uh, different people have different responses. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But in general, milk helps if you have a parasite. Mm -hmm. And uh, just taking a packet of milk can ease the symptoms. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I have no problem with that. Yogurt, on the other hand, uh, so th there are different things in the, in, the, in the gastrointestinal system. So if you have acidity, milk is, uh, can help you. But mm -hmm. sometimes some peop many people find that yogurt makes it worse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But yogurt is useful in other diseases in the gastrointestinal system, like if you're bloated or you have other, other, other symptoms. So on a dactari, that's what we should say. Yeah, in, uh, try to educate yourself. Uh, and if your symptoms are bothering you, it's a good idea always to get the advice of a doctor. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay, okay, keep those questions coming. Can we now go to stomach ulcers? Mm. Yes, stomach ulcers. This one I've had from, I think, high school. I have ulcers. I have ulcers. Self-medicated uh, ulcers. What are stomach ulcers? So an ulcer is uh, just a wound, a wound in the stomach. Wow. Or in the duodenum, that's where they're most common. Just mm -hmm. the place just after the stomach. And these uh, also happen, they are quite uh, common, but uh, ma for m many people who have symptoms which they think are ulcers, don't actually have ulcers. Mm -hmm. They just have what in common language you'd call hyperacidity. Mm -hmm. That's much more common, where you're just feeling acidity and sometimes we look inside and we don't find an ulcer, mm -hmm. uh, but you've been calling it over the year ulcer. So this is a very common thing, which in medicine we call dyspepsia. We know it exists. We Look, look for it, we find it, we reassure the patient and their medications to control it. Ulcers on the other hand are there, they occur. We find sometimes there is a wound in your stomach and uh, we know that co a common cause of ulcers is the same H. pylori. Wow. So we look for it when we find that you have ulcers and we treat it. And mm. when we treat it, you're well. Uh, ulcers can also occur because of some types of medications, mm -hmm. especially the painkillers mm -hmm. that we call in medicine nine steroidals. Mm -hmm. They erode the wall of the stomach and duodenum and they cause an ulcer. Mm -hmm. So they occur, ulcers occur, they are mostly treatable, but uh, when there's a suspicion of it, it's good to check with your doctor also because occasionally we find that an ulcer, very quite rarely, but happens, is a cancerous thing. Wow. So we normally have to check it out mm -hmm. and look at your risk factor, mm -hmm. what is your age, especially in the older people. Yeah. And then we investigate and we make sure this is an, an okay ulcer mm -hmm. and then we treat it appropriately. Stress as a cause of ulcers. Stress doesn't cause ulcer, but stress worsens ulcer. Oh, because people say, una nipea ulcers. Usi nipea ulcers. Una nipea ulcers. Stress can cause an ulcer, a wound, but stress if you already have ulcers mm -hmm. and many problems in your in the GI in the gastrointestinal system they are worsened by stress so first thing I will tell people is avoid stressful people mm -hmm. now that you have these symptoms <laughs> Please. yeah so it is a factor but it doesn't cause the ulcers didn't happen because of the stress mm -hmm. but it, the fact that your stress is making it worse mm -hmm. okay so mm -hmm. Dr. Ari has sent someone to you yes who has stomach ulcers what does this look like <laughs> First of all, uh, this would be somebody who is in pain. Mm -hmm. So one of the things, take your meds. Mm -hmm. Take your medication as prescribed by mm -hmm. Dr. Tari. Mm -hmm. You'd find some of the drugs that are given to treat ulcers and other this GI tract mm -hmm. issues. Uh, I keep saying GI. GI is gastrointestinal. Mm -hmm. yes. I, mm -hmm. I think it's just something I'm mm -hmm. used to doing. GI, now yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah. Okay, gastrointestinal. Yes. So yeah. most of these drugs that you're given to treat diet digestive illnesses a lot of them you're told to eat one hour before meal mm -hmm. take one hour before meals mm -hmm. take that hour two hours or whatever the direction they give it is very important that you follow that mm -hmm. you know, so some people say dawa in na chakula so it's very important you follow that because aside from the fact that you won't get everything mm -hmm. out of it it also, some of these drugs will also hamper some nutrients from mm. being absorbed. So you're not getting everything you could have gotten from the food. Mm -hmm. So take your drugs as prescribed, number one. So number two is, again, small frequent meals mm -hmm. because you don't, want to, you don't want your stomach to distend. To distend is to stretch. 
Okay. Mm -hmm. Because imagine if you have a wound on you, if you just on your arm, mm -hmm. and then you stretch it out, what will you feel? Ouch, pain. Exactly. Yes. Again, don't wait until you're hungry so that you eat. So this is somebody we would advise to graze. Mm -hmm. So you're eating a little bit at a time, small, very small, very fre frequent meals, so mm -hmm. that you, your acid, your stomach acids always have something to okay. digest. Okay. Yeah. Now that we have you in studio, could you just mm -hmm. do like a short meal plan, just an example? Oh my goodness, an example. For someone who has been sent by Daktari to you, and now I have to change, I have to throw out everything in my fridge. Oh my goodness, no, you don't throw out everything in your fridge. Mm -hmm. Nutrition is very individualized. This is why it's a, it's a very big challenge to give a blanket diet plan. Okay. Because I have to know, Kerry, what do you usually eat? Then you I tell eat me. Um, biscuits, oh my cookies, goodness. carrots. Okay, those ones, we have, oh, we'll <laughs> throw away the biscuits, we'll keep the carrots. But the point is... It's you very individual. It's very individual. Absolutely understand. Yeah. Absolutely understand. Let's go to the <laughs> diagnosis. Um, and through this, can we start with acid reflux? And as you, if you're watching us, we're going through three of the, of the many, there are very many digestive disorders. So many. But the three that I think, are these the most common, Dr. Very common, yeah. These Good. are very common. So acid reflux, H. pylori, and stomach ulcers. Those are the three that we're going through. I come into your office, Dr. What's the diagnosis of acid reflux? So for, for us, medical personnel, mm -hmm. diagnosis starts with your history. And okay. that's very important. So it's important for you when you go to the doctor's office to give them, to tell them exactly what you feel in a complete uh, form. Because the history, as we were taught in medical school, makes 80%. Of, so if you give the doctor half the story, they're going to get a wrong diagnosis. So for diagnosis, most of this, for the digestive system, most of the time, the history is more than enough for me to make a diagnosis. And if I'm doing a test, it's just to confirm. Like mm -hmm. for example, if for acid reflux, a patient comes to me and they tell me I have a feeling of heartburn, mm -hmm. or I feel like the food is coming back up, I have excessive salivation, mm -hmm. and I'm feeling a bitter taste in my mouth. Sometimes mm -hmm. they cough, then I know this is reflux disease. Mm -hmm. And I'll do some tests, maybe I'll touch the tummy and uh, maybe ask for one or two tests. This is just to confirm. Most mm -hmm. of the time for reflux, I don't need to confirm your history. will uh, confirm it to me that this is the problem. Mm -hmm. And I will start you on treatment. And if it doesn't work, then I know, okay, this might, is, is it a pussy? Is it possible there is something else? Okay. For H. pylori, we do a test. H. pylori, there is no way to know. Patient will come, will take a history, and they'll tell us the symptoms which I already alluded to. They have some discomfort or fullness in the upper part of the abdomen, and uh, I'm belching a lot. Mm -hmm. Then I'll send you to the to the lab, mm -hmm. and we do a stool test, which is very good. Yes. It is very sensitive, and it will tell me H. pylori positive, and mm -hmm. uh, we treat. Mm -hmm. And then the other one is uh, ulcers. Uh, it's a similar thing. Normally, patient will come, and they have pain in the upper part of the abdomen or they have fullness uh, uh, in the upper part of the abdomen, they, they, they feel discomfort after they eat. And then uh, if I suspect that it could be ulcers, usually mm -hmm. the only way to di diagnose that is to do a test called an endoscopy. Mm -hmm. Endoscopy uh, is, um, as I was telling you, Kerry, just before we started, is yes. uh, endo means inside, and yes. scope is See, to look. To look, So yes. endoscopy is to look inside. So I look, put a tube down your throat, and I look inside and I see that there is an ulcer. Okay. And then we can treat it. Wow. Mm. Many questions coming in on our text line, triple mm. two, three, two. Can we just pick a few as you continue to send them because we don't want to rush through them when we are done. Someone says, I have some chronic urticaria. Urticaria. Yes. Mm. And P-S-O-R-I-A-S-I-S. -I -S -I -S. <laughs> Psoriasis? Psoriasis, yes. Psoriasis, mm -hmm. thank yeah. you so much for yeah. two years now. Yeah. Yeah. What is the best treatment? I react to almost everything I eat. And both of you can respond to this one. And please say those words out again. For yeah, and psoriasis are, are diseases of the skin. Uh -huh. So it's a skin reaction mm -hmm. and uh, it's, it's a rash you see on the skin. Yes. And this is a specialized area which uh, there's a specialist, different specialist who deals with called a dermatologist. Mm -hmm. So what I would advise the viewer is to have their lesion uh, looked at by a dermatologist, mm -hmm. a doctor who specializes in diseases skin, of the skin. Yes. Yes, then they can advise. Okay. Because there are treatments for, for, for urticaria and for psoriasis. 
Psoriasis is a very rarely a reaction to food. Uticaria mm -hmm. can be, but mm -hmm. uh, dermatologists will be able to determine that. Okay, mm. so they should, they, they've been thinking that it's something to do with everything they consume, with their digestion, yeah. everything, but... It is uh, possible, but you need to be assessed, because okay. uh, especially mm -hmm. with psoriasis, it's a very serious disease, mm. which is rarely a reaction to something you have eaten. So if oh. you feel like it is that, then there needs to be a proper assessment to determine, mm. because we don't see that commonly. I think our producer is watching and she knows for sure that we do need to deal with uh, dermatology, psoriasis, psoriasis yeah. and urticaria. Yes. Okay, mm. we'll be looking at that. One is saying, how do you clean the gut? My goodness, that's a very good question. <laughs> There is this misconception that you need to do a detox. Uh -huh. So you need to go and get certain pills and what, what not. The best way to clean your body is to eat and to eat what you're supposed to be eating. Number one, eat foods that, foods that are high in fiber. So these are your vegetables and your fruits. So there's insoluble fiber, the fiber that your body doesn't digest. Mm -hmm. And then there's the soluble fiber. So the insoluble fiber it helps to push things okay. down then the soluble fiber, some, we call it, sucks up all the nasty stuff mm -hmm. out of your GI. Sometimes it even holds on to the cholesterols and whatnot. I'm curious what, what this <laughs> could be. Could you just name just... Yes, I'm getting that. that. So, thank you. Insoluble fiber is now from your vegetables. Mm -hmm. The fiber, kamba, kamba za chakula. Mm -hmm. That's what we call them mm -hmm. in Swahili. But then the, ins the soluble fiber is what we'd get from your legumes, your grains, mm. right? Mm -hmm. So you know when you cook uji and then somehow it becomes thick yes. and somewhat jelly-like? Mm -hmm. That's what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. So that is good for you and it is in your beans, it is in your ndengu, it is in your njahe. For people who like njahe, yes. everybody should love njahe. Okay. So that's important. Then drink water. Mm -hmm. Drink a lot of water. That's the best thing. I had a fiber conversation with my mom recently. We we're trying to make mokimo, this uh, traditional food. Mm -hmm. And I was telling her everyone blends the pumpkin. You know, mm -hmm. you blend the pumpkin so that it's easy to just crush mm -hmm. it. She's like, no, we need the fiber. So we won't blend the pumpkin. Your mm -hmm. mom will use it as... She's on point. She's yes. smart. Mm. Happy <laughs> Mother's Day wishes. <laughs> it's my one chance. Exactly. Anyway, uh -huh. yeah. So that works. That works. Absolutely. And That's exercise. Great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Make sure you walk around, exercise. Also, oh, Doctor, do you want to add anything on that? Yeah, yeah, I think uh, Christine is uh, perfectly right. Mm -hmm. Remember that uh, God created the body in such a nice way mm -hmm. that uh, in the natural state, it cleans itself. Mm -hmm. You don't need to do any special thing mm -hmm. except just live a normal, healthy lifestyle mm -hmm. and you are... You are the gastrointestinal system is going to clean itself, it's going to remove all the bad stuff, it's going to absorb the good stuff, mm -hmm. and you'll be okay. And uh, diet, just getting a good balanced diet is good enough. So, this is a good time to dispel the myths. Let's start with you, Christine. What have you had? How can we clean our colon? Oh my goodness. So, uh, we, we, just before we started, we, we were talking about colon hydrotherapy, and that we were talking about what it means. So, what basically they do is they clean your gut outside in so splash water using a pipe inside and then draw all the whatever that is inside out so doctor what do you think yeah so <laughs> i have nothing against the people who do colon cleansing the commercial type. nothing personal <laughs> yeah but uh, i don't uh, I believe in that kind of a treatment i think as i've said mm -hmm. the body naturally is able to clean itself mm. so you should not look at yourself as dirty your colon as a uh, it mm -hmm. is okay. There are occasions when we need to clean your colon. Mm -hmm. And uh, when that happens, we have drugs which do that very effectively. When, for example, I need to examine your colon, I can clean it out very quickly, very effectively, just with the medication. Mm -hmm. So we don't need a special uh, sort of gadgets to, to, to clean your colon. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're in agreement. What are some of the other myths on digestive disorders? Even as we continue with the rest of the questions, keep your questions coming on triple two three two. We'll be opening the call line in the next hour, so stand by for that. The numbers are on your screen, but for now, triple two three two. Uh, well, it's a difficult question. <laughs> some of the myths. I, there are so many myths about what to eat. In mm, fact, yeah. there's this one for do fruits before food. Oh man. Uh, don't do fruits at night. Drink water 30 minutes before you eat. Okay. Uh, come slowly. Pause. <laughs> <laughs> 
So let's start. With <laughs> mos, mos. Eh, mos, mos. Please, <laughs> let's start. So with the fruits, uh, a lot of the time we p people say don't eat fruits with your meals, but there are some fruits that really go well with meals, like tomatoes. Okay, yes. Tomatoes are fruits. So, <laughs> tomatoes are fruits, and I'm going to get to that. Okay. Yeah. So when you're eating, let's say your sukuma wiki or your legumes, your maharagwes, and you want to get the best out of them, like the best, most of iron, mm -hmm. you need to have something citrus or something with vitamin C that helps with absorption. Wow. That's why we do tomatoes. Mm. Like when you add tomatoes to your food, you're winning. Like wow. you're really, really winning. Mm -hmm. The other thing you can do is have a piece of orange with your fruit or a lemon. Mm -hmm. Now the challenge with uh, letter, people having <laughs> meals and their fruits is we tend to lump everything up together and mm. say, I have eaten. So mm -hmm. you eat all the fruits you are supposed to eat in that one meal. You eat all the vegetables in that one meal and everything else. So you miss out because the food that you eat, there is a finite amount. Like it, this amount that your body can digest mm -hmm. and absorb mm -hmm. is set. Mm -hmm. It is not infinite that if I eat all the oranges in the world, I'll absorb all the vitamin C. Okay. So it all goes to your pee. So you've wasted it. Yeah. You'd rather have eaten... Uh, a fruit maybe at 10 in the morning, maybe mm -hmm. another fruit for breakfast, mm -hmm. but not everything in one meal. Mm -hmm. When we get to water before, after a meal, again, uh, by the time you're eating, it would be good if you've been drinking water throughout the day in the way that we say every, every one or two hours have a glass of water. Mm -hmm. By the time you're having your meal, you're not very hungry, very thirsty. So all you need to do is wash out your mouth. Mm. You don't need to drink gallons of water because because you're thirsty. Mm. The other myth that you've talked about, I have forgotten. <laughs> I also can't remember. They're just like <laughs> running, but we'll continue with that. Yeah. Dr. Harry already dispelled one that people can cause you ulcers. Mm. Your ulcers are there, but they're worsened via stress. Mm. And that brings us to the question, can ulcers heal completely? Yes, ulcers mm. heal. The answer is a definite yes, wow. ulcers heal. And uh, all we need to find the cause, as we said, the common cause, commonest cause in our environment is H. pylori. And H. pylori is a treatable disease. Mm. So when you treat H. pylori, the ulcers heal. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Someone is asking a question right here. How do you handle the psychocosmatic that the mind-body causes of the diseases of the gut? That's Alex. Thank you so much for texting in. Yeah, that's a very good question. Mm -hmm. And as uh, Christine uh, alluded to, mm -hmm. we know that the digestive system is connected to the brain mm -hmm. and a lot of the times the problem that people feel the bloating and the constipation and the diarrhea is just a miscommunication between the brain and the gastrointestinal system mm. and we, 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 we call that the brain gut gut axis and that is what so if you have problems in your brain it can affect your digestive system if you have problem in your digestive system it can affect your brain and this is the psychosomatic, I think, that uh, the viewer is alluding to. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, difficult to, 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 to deal with, but it is possible just by first understanding that this is a problem. Mm -hmm. Many times the doctor or even the patient mm -hmm. doesn't uh, understand or doesn't agree that this is a problem, that is a miscommunication. Mm -hmm. So you need to first understand the problem. And we have many methods, both physical methods or counseling and uh, a cognitive uh, behavioral therapy. So you mm -hmm. try to teach the patient behavior and also medications which can deal with this kind of a problem. Okay, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Can we go to this one? Is it okay for someone who has ulcers to fast? If yes, how long? Also, is the acidic cough, also is the acidic cough productive, i.e. the mucus bowls? You can both respond to that one. I'll yeah. start with fasting. Dr. Okay. can take mucus bowls. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you have ulcers, there are many ways you can fast. Mm -hmm. you know, it is not just fasting is a denial mm -hmm. of something that is pleasurable to mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. So it just doesn't have to be food, especially when you have a disease condition like ulcers or any other disease condition, mm -hmm. it would not be advisable. Okay, but I think just to slightly differ on that, food is one of the... Really, when Jesus fasted, he fasted food, and we are Christians for yes. what Christ did. But that is a conversation for another show <laughs> right here on Hope TV for where you day. look and live. <laughs> but I'm not saying that you affect your health. If you, I mean, we always mm. advise if you're having a health, seek, seek advice from your doctor on how it is you can fast effectively because the essence is for you to get weak in your body so that you can strengthen your spirit. And fasting is not for God, it's for you. So, mm. 
we'll see our doctor when we need to fast but <laughs> go ahead go ahead <laughs> <laughs> I was just about to say exactly that. When you need to fast, there are ways that you can, like right now our, our Muslim brothers are going through Ramadan, mm -hmm. and there the are ways that you can fast that do not really have to damage your health. Mm -hmm. But then when you look at it, the arguments around fasting, sometimes it is good to really work with your doctor. Work with your doctor even before you think about fasting. Mm -hmm. So don't say, I am going to fast tomorrow. Therefore, I am calling my doctor today. Mm -hmm. Please say, three months from now, I will be undertaking a fast. Okay, so prep. Prep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But don't just do it. it would, there, are many, there are many considerations mm -hmm. for you. Don't just do it. Okay. Yeah. Okay, you can respond to the question as I will be coming to you with this one. Milk, wheat, beans, eggs cause a lot of bloating and a lot of discomfort. At times pain, most readily available food upset the tummy. How can I sort it out? So you can you can pause on that as we come to you, Daktari, with this particular one. Is it okay for someone with ulcers to fast? If yes, for how long? And is the acidic cough product Yes, and also is the acidic cough productive? I didn't understand that. I think you understand it better. Yeah. Okay, fasting is okay if you want to fast. And uh, if, you, if you have ulcers, mm -hmm. only that you ca if, uh, I don't know if the viewer is asking whether fasting, you can use that as a treatment for ulcer. The answer is no. No. But you can fast mm -hmm. if you have ulcers, mm -hmm. if you need to, for whatever reason, mm -hmm. to fast. Mm -hmm. And uh, some people, when they fast, their symptoms get worse. But those now with the modern medications that we have, we can control. We can control your symptoms and you fast if it is for a religious reason or for another reason. Mm -hmm. So there is no real reason why you can't fast if okay. you have this. Mm. Okay. And then for this uh, other question about the cough, if, if, as we said, if you have reflex, you can cough. Usually it's a dry cough. I think that's what he's asking about. And he doesn't have phlegm. And, uh, but I don't think it's that important. Occasionally you can produce some sputum, it doesn't make a difference. Treatment is the same. If it is because of acidity, we just uh, suppress the acid and usually you are okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Many questions as well on our Facebook page. I think this will be a question and answer session. Are you guys ready? Because mm -hmm. they're already flowing, flowing, flowing. Okay, uh, you have your question. Just pause yes. on it just for a second. Let me just acknowledge those who are watching us live on our Facebook page. I'd like to encourage you to share the video so that the people who are on your page can also get to watch us dance on in Ruiru, tuned in from Kagio and Kirinyaga, Sante Sana, Peter, Juma, enjoying the show. Gideon Yongese is also enjoying the show. Christine Wamuya, watching from Thika, hello. Uh, who else is here? Alice, Alicia, and Karen, already learning more and enjoying the show. Felix Karimi, Arimi as well, enjoying the show and saying, good job, Christine. <laughs> Joe, Joe Ngigi has a question, very informative show. I manage ulcerative colitis and occasionally I have mild acidity issues. I'm doing really well though. Thank you for this advice. So he's just acknowledging. Yeah. yeah. Is, did I say the word correctly? Yes, ulcerative, ulcerative colitis. Yes. Thank you. Mm. Christine, your question right here on milk, wheat, mm. beans, eggs, causing a lot of bloating oh and a lot of discomfort at times, pain, most readily available food also upsets the tummy. How can I sort it out? That's Robert. Thank you for your question. First things first. Uh, see your doctor. Mm -hmm. uh, you might have something that we call irritable bowel syndrome. The doctor will do better to diagnose that. Mm -hmm. So once doctor diagnoses, again, if you have symptoms. What did you say again? Irritable, irritable bowel syndrome. Mm -hmm. okay. We'll talk about that, doctor. Mm -hmm. Yes, doctor will talk about it. So first things, we, when you come to me as a nutritionist, I put you on what is called a FODMAP diet. Mm -hmm. So we go in and say, okay, fine, you're saying milk, and grains and beans and wheat and these are the foods that are around you they are causing acidity and discomfort mm -hmm. so what happens if we remove them and mm -hmm. give your gut time to rest and this is not that something that you can do by yourself mm -hmm. you really need guidance around it and okay. it is not something you can do forever mm -hmm. again we also advise those simple things that you can do at home, like soaking your legumes before you cook them. Mm -hmm. That works really well to reduce some of the factors that cause acidity. Cooking them with carrots? Cooking them with carrots. Uh, not as good as soaking. As not as good as soaking. <laughs> not okay. as good as soaking. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you move from there. Mm -hmm. So we come in, we give you that, uh, we put you on what we call a FODMAP diet. Then when we move, when we start adding things back, then we can adequately trace what is really hurting you. Okay. Sometimes, this is the fun part, 
sometimes the thing that is hurting you is not necessarily f the food itself, but your habits around the food. Mm. What are some of these habits? Some of the habits. Mm -hmm. uh, you tend to have one really big meal at the mm. end of the day mm. uh, that is low in fiber, that is high in fat. And I think that's a highlight. At the end of the day, why? <laughs> no, at the end of the day, I mean, you need the food for energy to burn yeah. throughout the day. Exactly. They say breakfast like a king, mm. dinner like a princess, I mean, lunch like a princess, dinner like a pauper. Yes. Mm. Mm -hmm. Look, as you go towards the end of the day, have your more, uh, less heavy meals mm -hmm. towards the end of the day. So in our setting, we find we like it upside down. So mm -hmm. we start our day and we are always grumpy at the beginning of the day. Because you're always. hungry, you need the food. Yes, you're always thinking of Mama, Mama Mandazi, where is she, when is she coming? When is she going to open? Exactly. Uh -huh. So start from there. Then we can now move towards now this other, get a diagnosis first. Okay. Yeah. Okay, secrets of getting to 1GB. <laughs> 1GB. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about, uh, you said it's good genes. Good genes. Okay. <laughs> but Harry, let's talk about IBS, just for a minute. Yeah, yeah. IBS is, um, as, as Christine has just described, mm -hmm. <coughs> uh, a disease of the gastrointestinal system, and it is very common. Mm -hmm. It's one of the commonest things that a gastroenterologist sitting in the office sees. So we need to add it to our top three. Yeah. In okay. fact, it is one of the top. Okay. things that I see. Any one time people come to my office, there are 10 people sitting outside, I think four or five will have IBS. Wow. So this means irritable bowel syndrome. Irritable, that is your intestine has no structural problem when I look, but it is sensitive. Mm -hmm. So the things that we normally eat, the beans and the, and the, and the, and the, and the milk, and, and they get fermented by the bacteria in the gut, for us, me, I don't feel it. My body is used to that. But mm -hmm. for people with IBS, they have sensitivity. They feel it more than mm. the rest of us. Mm. So it's a very uh, common problem and is a bad problem because it causes a lot of uh, uh, discomfort and uh, people being away from work mm -hmm. and uh, they don't understand what's the problem and they think I have cancer. But usually it's just that sensitivity. Mm. And we, a major part of the treatment of irritable bowel syndrome is the diet. Okay. So it is what... Uh, Christine is describing. Mm. So we have special diets for it. We call FODMAPs. In short, in, in very, it's a major topic, this diet. And usually you have to sit with Christine for 45 minutes for her to teach you what to do, how to cook. Mm. But in brief, I advise for, for a start, avoid milk and milk product and, and uh, wheat ngano mm. for a start. Usually mm. many people with IBS, they feel better. Okay. Mm. And then you see Christine, she'll advise you on all the other things which are fermentable things, the apples and whatnot. Mm. Yeah. There was a charm on social media that mm. I ended up joining. I feel so... <sighs> My eyes have been open. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Mm. <laughs> so, milk is for baby cows. <laughs> Even adult cows don't drink milk. Why do adult humans think mm. that their body can digest milk? Mm. And thus, we are going lactose-free. Mm. We are not touching anything oh. with milk. Please, it's a myth. Dispel mm. it. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> we agree that, yes, milk is for baby cows. Mm. But there is a reason that Ali Man uh -huh. decided to domesticate a cow. What was the person doing? The one who decided that this is something mm. that I can drink. Mm -hmm. It was good for them. Mm -hmm. But then in our society, as we have continued uh, living, because we don't take as much milk mm -hmm. as we used to, mm -hmm. as, we, as we grow older, mm -hmm. then we tend to now get uh, the levels of the enzyme that digests the milk start becoming lower and lower because we, we don't take mm -hmm. it as much. So we don't exercise that part mm -hmm. of our digestion. So as we, what happens is now you either avoid the milk mm -hmm. And in our setting, that would not be extremely, f very feasible because we need some, we need dairy for our vitamin D, especially. Yeah, JP texts in already and says, Maziwa ni amboga ya kienyeji. Mazi Hapo, tuta <laughs> korofisha na kitoko <laughs> jameni. Please, because what mkorofishe. <laughs> Please, go ahead. go ahead. No, what we say is, you can, when, you, when you have your mboga ya kienyeji, your nice, dark, green, beautiful, leafy Kunde. vegetables, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they are very rich in iron. Mm -hmm. And then you put your milk inside. Mm -hmm. What does your milk have? Calcium. Mm -hmm. So what happens is that this iron in the mboga mm -hmm. and this calcium in the milk come and form a partnership. Oh, yeah, yeah. They hold together 
we call the chelate, we say chelate, mm -hmm. but they hold together and form a compound that your body cannot absorb. So you've wasted the food. Mm. Technically you have. That's so the meal can yeah. it's all gone now. <laughs> yeah, everything is the, gone. I'm the iron something. and the calcium. <laughs> <laughs> if you're cooking, stop. <laughs> stop. I think Remove I'm not cooking. <laughs> don't put the milk. Don't egg. put the milk. That's even why we say don't mix baby food with milk. Like when unless it especially if it has a dark green uh, vegetable or if it is uji a wimbi, we say don't put milk. Just give the milk later. Wait for a while and wow. then drink milk. You know the children who have grown up and they've been <laughs> eating that. Anyway, thank you so much for that. Um, you can continue, sorry. Oh my but, but that's good information. <laughs> that's great information. Mm, I, I, uh, we, we, what the other myth that we talk about, I've had people talking about what are you when you eat meat, mm. it sits in your stomach for X number of days. That is why you should not eat meat. Dr. You know what I am about to yes. say, but because you have the title, please say, say it. Say it. <laughs> no, it's, uh, the short answer is that's not true. Mm -hmm. That means, yeah, because um, uh, all foods generally stay uh, approximately the same time. Some other foods take mm -hmm. a bit longer. Mm -hmm. There are foods which stay longer in your uh, stomach. Mm -hmm. And that's why when, when you want to lose weight, we say eat this. It's the traditional African food because mm -hmm. you not feel hungry and start snacking at 10. Mm -hmm. But in general, in the digestive system, the, we can't say that uh, this food stays much longer than the meat. So it's not a true, true yeah, story. Exactly. There's someone mm -hmm. who ruined my relationship with meat, a French mm -hmm. lady. Mm -hmm. I hope she doesn't watch this episode. She said that when you eat meat, she's, she's completely vegan. Mm -hmm. Three years down the line, you'll find about 10 kilograms of meat in your stomach. Oh my. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Doctor, you to say, ah, bana. <laughs> okay. Like Not true. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. I have noted that when I take some foods, I immediately get painful ulcers in my mouth, lips, in my tongue, generally within the mouth. What is the problem? Oh and are those even ulcers? Oh, well, it's uh, difficult uh, to diagnose just from that little information. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe we can ask a follow-up question because our text yeah. line is open triple two three two. Because uh, you 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 need first to we need first to know what kind of ulcers are these. Do you have some big ulcers, big ulcers? Is it painful? Mm -hmm. Is it uh, and is it after you eat a specific meal or which kind of meal in particular you're talking mm. about? They say I take some food, I immediately get painful ulcers in my mouth. So the question we'd like to ask you uh, for you, send this. Your number ends with nine four. You said some food. So what foods are they? What else, Doctor? Yeah, what foods are they? Mm -hmm. How long does this... Uh, is it immediately after you eat the food yes. that you get ulcer? Mm -hmm. Is it to a week later? Is it how long do these ulcers last? Okay. So we need uh, a lot of questions. What other symptoms do you have? Yeah. Do you have a problem swallowing? Do you feel like there's an ulcer in your esophagus? Okay. Yeah. So yeah. go ahead and <laughs> respond to that. Then we'll be able to see that better. Or maybe it's just, you know, when you don't cut your pineapple nicely. And then <laughs> yeah. you, you yeah, it's, get it's very And <laughs> everything else is painful. <laughs> Um, okay, fine. So we'll answer that. One regagitation. Joseph says, I have regagitation. First of all, for those who do not know what it is, what is it? And, <laughs> and how can you respond to yeah, it? Regagitation just means food backing up, coming mm -hmm. back up. So food, once it's in your stomach, is supposed to stay there. And there's a valve to keep it there. So in some people, it comes back. Mm -hmm. We call that regagitation. And that's a symptom of reflux. That's mm -hmm. reflux disease. Okay. Yeah. So we normally treat that with simple measures. Joseph, where are you? Can he come and see you? Because he's, he's experiencing that. Yeah, regurgitation. If he's in Nairobi, yeah, he can yeah, come. Yeah, regurgitation, if you have uh, tried uh, uh, some treatments that is not working, whatever, mm -hmm. I'm sure most people come to me when they have already seen other doctors. You can you feel free to come to my office and uh, we can discuss and uh, agree on a treatment plan. Mm -hmm. mm. Awesome. As we continue to this, can we now go to the treatment of the various things as we continue to get questions? We can start with um, reflux. Yeah, reflux we, we treat. We mm -hmm. have two forms of treatment. Number four, first part is the lifestyle, mm -hmm. and the second part is the medication. Okay. And the lifestyle is to avoid the things which we have already said they cause reflux, mm -hmm. which is uh, number one, you lose weight because a good. Um, uh, high weight person's reflux, avoid very acidic food, the very spicy food, mm -hmm. the yogurt, the very, very, the, 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 the oranges, the things that are acidic, and also the food that, some food 
makes uh, reflux worse by making the esophagus lose f a lot of fat mm -hmm. and too much coffee. Mm -hmm. And then don't drink, don't smoke. Mm -hmm. and then the medications, we have a number of medications that we use. They suppress their acid and then you feel less symptoms of the reflux. Okay. Mm -hmm. He sent someone to you. What, is, what, what do we replace those things with? Oh, yes. So first of all, the, the wide variety. So mm -hmm. if you're not eating oranges, what else is in your locality that is available to you? So we're not going to tell you to go and look for strawberries, although we love strawberries, mm -hmm. but we will talk about what is available to you. Other things we can tell you to eat a lot of merenda, you know those nice mm -hmm. mucusy vegetables? Mm -hmm. <laughs> They're really good mm -hmm. even for your digestive system. So a lot of nice mucusy vegetables. Is spinach one of those? Uh, no, but spinach is good. Mm. But wait first, now I have to, are you saying <laughs> we shouldn't cream spinach? You, it just hit you. <laughs> yeah, I was, like, I, was, I was fine with the not creaming of kunde, yeah. but not creaming yeah. spinach. Okay, fine. If you're creaming your spinach, fine. Let us, let's say this. Once in a while, uh -huh. as a treat, as a culinary treat, treat uh -huh. yeah. cream your spinach. Okay. But then, once in a while, normally, uh -huh. when you're making your spinach, just uh, a little bit of oil, saute in a little bit of oil and tomatoes. Yeah. Tomatoes. Good stuff. Good stuff. They'll help the absorption. Yes. Okay. Sawa sawa. Mm. <laughs> Let's go now to diagnosis of H. pylori. I mean, treatment of H. pylori. Yeah. Treatment H. pylori is a bacteria. Mm -hmm. And as you know, bacteria we treat with antibiotics. So we have a large number of antibiotics that we use mm -hmm. for H. pylori. And so this we just ESO kit one. that I got, like yeah. for 30 days, or what? Yeah, ESO kit is one of them. Mm -hmm. And then if ESO kit doesn't work, we, they, we have uh, other classes of antibiotics that we combine and use. Sometimes uh, the ones we are using don't work and we are forced to try to get the H. pylori and culture it in a lab and test it against many antibiotics. Wow. So that can happen. It's expensive, not mm. easily, readily available. So we just give antibiotics. The problem that we have here is that people come and they have taken uh, SO kit, it didn't work, they repeated. So they tell me I've taken SO kit six times. Oh no. And it didn't work. Does that make the no. bacteria stronger? That is a can lead to resistance, yes. but it doesn't make sense if you to, to take SO kit today and for two weeks and it didn't work, then you take SO kit again. again. Why are you doing that? So you, you should uh, see your doctor. Mm -hmm. Normally we have what we call second line, even third line drugs mm. that we use to try to eliminate H. pylori. Mm -hmm. Yes. And most of the time, by the time we're reaching the that line, it wa the, the, we are able to get rid of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have the our nutritionist in the studio and I can hear her just saying, wash your vegetables, <laughs> wash your hands, <laughs> wash everything. <laughs> okay, wash let me it. just, okay, let me let you say it. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> wash, 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 wash. <laughs> observe hygiene, mm -hmm. observe food hygiene. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, again, the other thing with H. pylori, because of the antibiotics, you have some of these complications. Now again, digestive tract complications mm -hmm. from the antibiotics. Mm -hmm. So somebody might say, I don't want to take this medicine anymore. It is making me even more sick. Mm -hmm. Sometimes because you have diarrhea or constipation. So this is something you can talk to your doctor about mm -hmm. and they can give you something we call probiotics. So your doctor will pr prescribe probiotics to take together with your antibiotics. Mm -hmm. Basically probiotics are good bacteria like the friendly soldiers in your tummy. Okay. Yeah, so that friendly would help soldiers. with the mm -hmm. symptoms. So mm -hmm. always talk to your doctor if anything unusual happens. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And finally, treatment and management of stomach ulcers. Yeah, so ulcers we treat depending on the cause. Mm -hmm. So the cause, as we've said, commonly is H. pylori. If it is that, we treat. Mm -hmm. If it is uh, uh, drugs, we say we withdraw that drug. And then for all of them, whether it's H. pylori or drugs, we give you the acid suppression medication, which is uh, easily available. So it's not usually a problem once we've established that it's a benign mm -hmm. ulcer. Okay. Mm -hmm. We'll be going on a short break for our first aid clip as you also respond to management of stomach ulcers. Ah, fantastic. Yes. Mm, so right now? Right now, yes. Oh my goodness. So first, whatever Dr. Ari has said, the mm -hmm. things we have talked about, small mm -hmm. frequent meals, we've already mm -hmm. said that. But you know, for GI, for gastrointestinal symptoms, digestive issues, one of the things that really helps is exercise. Mm -hmm. Just get, I know even when you're unwell and you feel pain, it's very That's difficult true. to move. Mm -hmm. Just get up and move a little. Mm -hmm. When you get your body moving, you get things moving. 
Wow. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Mm. Okay. We have that first aid clip, but just like more too many comments coming in today. Thank you so much for this. Is coconut in spinach okay? People are hurting. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> had coconut is fit. it's fine. Coconut and spinach is fine. Yeah. I'll try yes. and, and do that <laughs> as well. Um, thank you so much, Alice, Alicia, Felix. Thank you so much. We're coming back to more questions on our text line, triple two three two. Like, can hemorrhoids cause indigestion? Just process these ones. Also, can ulcers develop into cancer if they keep recurring? Well, that and much more when we come from our break. This is Health Check. It's on Hope TV where you look and live. I want to thank you one more time for sharing our video. I'm seeing many of you on Facebook sharing it. Go ahead and share it. Let's get the nation informed. Keep it right here where you look and live. My name is Kerry Kagiri. I'm hanging out with a gastroenterologist. I have practice this word i've said it well so i'll say it over and over our gastro okay <laughs> gastroenterologist <laughs> okay. dr onyango okay. thank you so much for your time sir. thanks thanks and Kevin. our nutritionist the, our nutritionist dietitian christine Gitao. yes asante sana kuna hyphen no of course thanks. okay so <laughs> we'll be right back <laughs> In today's segment, we are going to talk about uh, a sprained ankle. So how do you tell that someone has a sprained ankle? First of all, there's pain, there's a lot of pain, and then the person has difficulty in moving the injured part, and then there may be swelling. So how do we deal with this casualty who has sprained her, who has sprained her ankle? What you're first going to do is, you're going to rest the casualty. Rest the casualty, uh, let her lie down if she is able to lie down. Uh, rest your casualty. If you have an ice pack or something cold, you can apply it at the site of an injury. Now, in my first aid kit, I have, I do have an, an ice pack. In my first aid kit, I have an ice pack. So, I'm going to open up my uh, ice pack. I'm going to place it at the site of the injury. I'm going to place it at the site of the injury and then I'm going to compress. Once I compress, then what I'm going to do, I'm going to elevate her leg, elevate her leg and keep it elevated so that I can reduce the swelling. So I'm going to place this and observe. Uh, after 10 minutes, I'm going to remove the ice pack to see whether the swelling has reduced. The swelling has reduced and I'm just going to uh, reassure my casualty and ensure that uh, she stays in this position for around 30 minutes until the pain uh, goes away. That is how you manage a sprained ankle. And welcome back to the informative health check with me, Kerry Kagiri. Today's conversation is heated and so many things are changing about our lifestyle, our health, our fridges, our cooking styles, but mostly getting to visit the gastroenterologist. And as I said, gastroenterologist one more time, very important person to know, dealing with digestive disorders is this week's episode. If you just joined us, Karibu Sana, we are live as well on Facebook. You can go ahead and share that post. You can send in your text messages asking all your questions on 22232. You can also call us live in studio. The call lines are open within this hour right after we get through all these questions. Karibu Nisana. Thank One more time, you. we have Thank Dr. You. Steve Onyango. Mm. And also on our side, we have our nutritionist dietitian, Christine Gitao Karibu Sana. Maswali Apani Mingi, and when we left, we were coming back to this one. Let's start with Peter Kabubi's question. And thank you, sir, for texting in on triple two three two. He asks, Can ulcers develop into cancer if it keeps recurring? Or are ulcers cancerous? What what is the relation? Um no ulcers uh, in your stomach it is possible mm -hmm. for them to develop into cancer mm -hmm. but it's not common but what more commonly happens is that you have an ulcer which is cancerous but is not realized recognized to be cancerous wow so an ulcer in a stomach 
normally we follow it very closely. Mm -hmm. Ulcer can occur, remember, in the stomach and the duodenum. We have to follow the stomach ones very closely because they may be cancerous. Mm -hmm. So our, what our aim of, of our plan usually is to make sure it is not cancerous, then we can treat it comfortably now, sit back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But also when he adds the word recurring, does it mean he heals and he gets uh, others? Yes, it is. Uh, it sh uh, ulcers should not recur because mm -hmm. ulcers are treatable. Mm -hmm. So if you have ulcers that have recurred, you should consult with your doctor mm -hmm. whether the cause has not been identified and treated appropriately. Mm -hmm. And those which uh, recur despite the cause being uh, known and treated, mm -hmm. we still just keep you on medication continuously. You should be able to suppress the ulcer. Okay. So they should not recover if they are adequately treated. Okay. Mm. Another question that came in right here is, when I eat food, it stays in my stomach for long. What could be the problem? Mm, this is a good question. Mm -hmm. One of the things, what, how do you know it is staying for, in your stomach for long? Are you getting <laughs> bloated? Mm -hmm. Are you getting constipated? So these are the symptoms we would want to know mm -hmm. whether you have them or not. Mm -hmm. So one of, the th one of the challenges you might have is that you may be eating food that is too fatty, mm -hmm. that is very high in fat, so that slows the digestion. So it makes it really slow. The other option, again, you're not moving. Exercise, mm -hmm. exercise, exercise, my friend. Mm -hmm. So that makes it stay in your abdomen for a bit longer. And then again, now we would have to now look at the nitty gritties of whatever you're eating. What is it that in particular stays? Is there something that you feel gives you symptoms more than something else? Mm. And finally, if symptoms persist, seek medical, medical advice. advice. <laughs> After taking breakfast in the morning, I feel like vomiting and my stomach feels full with just little food. Many people find it hard to eat in the morning. What could be the cause of that? Yeah, many people, a lot of times it's a condition, actually, mm -hmm. a medical condition mm -hmm. that we call in medicine dyspepsia, but it's just related to uh, hyperacidity. Your mm -hmm. stomach is sensitive. So just a little food, you feel it like it's full. And sometimes even the person who's saying that they feel full most of the time, sometimes it's a disease, it's just hypersensitivity in your stomach, mm -hmm. which you should see your doctor. And usually we're able to sort it out with medication. Okay, mm. absolutely. As we continue with these questions coming in, one is asking, um, I'd like to know if anal fissures heal on their own or I need an operation. Whoa. Before that, can I just pick a phone call from Jezreel Envoy? Sure. Jezreel Envoy, good evening. Good evening, Jezreel. Good evening to you. How are you? How are you, sir? Fine, fine. Go ahead. What is your question this evening? My question is, mm -hmm. I'll check with, um, is it gastrointestinal disorder? Mm -hmm. Now, sometimes I feel like as if I'm being choked. Just repeat it one more time. Jezreel? Yes. Repeat that one more time. I'm saying, mm -hmm. Or sometimes there's a time I was detected with gastro disorder. Yes. Now when sometimes I, 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 after eat, I feel like I'm being shocked. Okay. Yes. Okay. Let's ask the doctor that question. So he was uh, diagnosed with Alzheimer's disorder, and when he eats, he feels like he's being choked. What could be the issue with him? Um, there are many things that can cause choking in general. If you have uh, any trouble swallowing, you must see a doctor mm -hmm. because uh, there are some, uh, there are many conditions that can cause that, mm -hmm. that uh, and some which can be quite serious, mm -hmm. which normally can be diagnosed only by looking. So it's imp not possible to answer that question on the phone. I advise uh, Jazreel to see the nearest um, specialist that he can find Envoy. to assess. Okay, mm. Sawa. So, uh, you were answering this one, if I could, if anal fissures heal on their own or if they need an operation? So the answer is it depends. Mm -hmm. Anal fissure, when they occur for the first time, what we call acute anal fissure, the one that has been there less than uh, a few months or several weeks, they mm -hmm. heal by, not by the, the, themselves necessarily, but by what we call conservative treatment. You don't have to do an operation. Mm -hmm. So we give you some medication, we give you something to insert, we say, tell you to sit on some... Uh, uh, water with some a bit of salt to mm -hmm. just keep the area clean and they heal. But there are specific kinds of fissures, the ones which have stayed for a long time and we've tried medical treatment, it didn't work. 
which need an operation. So okay. it depends on what kind of fissure you have. Okay. Mm. So still see a specialist, but it's possible for them to heal without an operation. Hey, yeah. Christine Gitao. Hey. How does one eat this bitter greens without milk to tenderize? This is Uncle <laughs> JK in Kikuyu. Talent. Uh, quarantine got talent. Mm -hmm. I know you, you've watched a lot of this. Quarantine got talent yes. is just mm -hmm. recipes mm -hmm. and uh -huh. things people are doing while uh -huh. well in quarantine. Mm -hmm. It has a lot to do with your cooking styles. Mm -hmm. Sometimes maybe if you, if you find, uh, what do you call it? Managu is bitter. I find it bitter. Mm -hmm. But if I take maybe and use it just with terere, not all the vegetables that you can find, mm -hmm. but maybe do a 50-50 ratio. The bitterness is Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so okay. can, recipes would be good. Okay. Mm. Uh, one here is asking also, this is a repeat question from someone here who is asking when they eat some foods, the one who asked, when I eat some foods, I immediately get painful answers in my mouth, the lips, the tongue. They came back with a follow-up question and saying, hello, how can I get there to your office? Where, where are you located in Nairobi? I've had the same problem for, for a long time now. Oh, okay, if you are interested to see uh, us, my office is at uh, General Accident House, mm -hmm. uh, Ralph Punch Road, just near Nairobi, uh, the Nairobi Hospital. And you can, uh, we are also, we have a website you can visit if you want directions. Mm -hmm. If you type my name on Google, you will be able to find our website. Oh, you just Google him. Mm -hmm. What do we Google? Dr. Yeah. Steven? You can stay Steven Onyango, Ayo, yes. or Digestive Health Clinic. Digestive Health yeah. Clinic. Yeah. Good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So as you get to that, our call line is open 0708 <laughs> It's on your screen. You can go ahead and call. One is asking, how long does it take? Uh, to be digested when it's taken in the night. I don't know what follow-up question this is for. Okay, I can't see what follow-up this question is for. What do I need to take first before breaking a three-day fast? This is a very good question. Yes. So it depends, was it a dry fast? Was it a water fast? But the first thing you do is you eat food that prepares your body for digestion. Mm -hmm. Remember, you've not been eating. If you've been doing maybe a dry fast or just a water fast, mm -hmm. you start maybe with a, a juice or a piece of fruit or something very bland, like just very small amounts of mashed potatoes. Mm -hmm. There's a challenge that when you start, when you stop a fast abruptly, let us say you had a three-day fast, and then you cut it to day and start eating mountains to day, you somewhat if this you cause a an imbalance even in your, in your hormones so one of the symptoms you'd have when that imbalance happens you feel like a bottomless pit because you you've ruined the balance of hormones you feel like a bottomless pit you don't feel full no matter what that's you so true yeah. i've gone through that yeah so it's important you start with food that prepares your digestive system mm -hmm. just a piece a piece of fruit and not acidic fruit maybe popo then you move from there and have some soup. Mm -hmm. Then move from there and have maybe light mashed potatoes with some steamed vegetables. Mm -hmm. Now as you progress between now the first day, then in the second day you can at least increase the amount of food that you're eating mm -hmm. and make it a little bit more varied okay. and then progress onwards. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. Wilson calling us from Nairobi City. How are you, sir? Good evening, Wilson. Yes, how are you? Fine, thank you. How are you? I'm good. Sure, go ahead with your question. Uh, mm -hmm. That is after having my dinner. Mm -hmm. I always feel some uh, pain under uh, my abdomen. Mm -hmm. But it's not too much. Kila subui? Kila subui. Dr. do you have a follow-up question? Yeah, which part of the abdomen? The abdomen, there's the upper part, middle part, lower part. <laughs> The lower part. The lower part. The lower part. And, uh, and uh, so, mm -hmm. uh, I always uh, experience a lot of saliva during the night, especially when I'm sleeping. I don't know what can be the problem. And uh, you don't have a problem going to the toilet? No, no problem at all. And you don't feel bloated? No, no. Okay. Okay, we'll be answering that question. Thank you, Wilson, for calling. Thank you. Dr. what is going on with Wilson? Uh, there are a few possibilities. A lot of the times when you feel uh, discomfort just after a meal, and it's the lower part of the tummy, mm -hmm. 
is IBS, mm -hmm. the one that we talked about. Irritated bowel. Yeah, irritable bowel syndrome. Irritable bowel syndrome. Um, uh, sometimes it's just a, still a manifestation of this hyperacidity that we call dyspepsia, what we commonly call hyperacidity, but we call in medicine dyspepsia. Mm -hmm. So you have a sensitive intestine. Mm -hmm. So, but uh, still I would advise if, uh, for a symptom like this to seek medical advice mm -hmm. because to make a complete diagnosis, we need to examine that tummy feel, see if there's anything, decide if you need a test. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so the question one was asking was, how long does meat take to be digested, especially at night? Oh my goodness. But before <laughs> before you answer that, let's pick up a call from Kuala. Ken, good evening. Yeah, how are you? Fine, thank you, Ken. Karibu sana. Yeah, nashikuru mungu. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nilikuwa na suwale mbo ndawa kuuliza. Endelea. Mtoto anapo kula, mm -hmm na chakula chake anakaa mdomoni sana bila kumeza. Mm -hmm. Shida inakuwa ni nini? Mm, okay, sawa. Tutajibu yeah. swali hilo. Asante. <laughs> this just reminds me of meza. You know mm -hmm. that you are meza. Mm -hmm. What happens, daktari? Sorry, I didn't... Uh, my, my oh, sorry. Uh, he's asking mtoto mm -hmm. ame, ame, a, anaweka chakula for so long kwa mdomo. Mm -hmm. Anakaa bila kumeza. Oh, okay. Uh, so just keeping the food in the mouth. Yeah, there are many, also like in most things in medicine, there are many possible problems. Mm -hmm. Some children have a problem swallowing. Mm -hmm. And uh, it could be a problem with the nerves around the throat. Mm -hmm. uh, swallowing is a very complex uh, it thing. It is actually. Which requires a lot of coordination mm -hmm. from all your nerves. So sometimes there's a problem with the swallowing. So that is uh, what I would suspect first. But again, unfortunately, I have to tell you that this child has to be examined. I cannot give you a complete answer, yeah. just a, a straight off. Okay. Is it also an this. age thing? Because I may think, I've seen so many kids having to talk, Meza, you know, you've coolered. Yeah. Some Meza. kids just don't want to, to they don't mm. feel like eating. And uh, a mistake many parents do is try to force. Mm. Yeah, kids don't uh, pretend that mm -hmm. they are full when they're not. Or if the kid doesn't want to eat, usually kids should eat uh, when they want to. Okay, you should time them. But you should not force feed. Mm -hmm. It is not advisable in mm -hmm. modern medicine to, mm -hmm. to force feed a kid. So if they don't want to eat, okay. When they feel hungry, they will eat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very well, mm -hmm. in fact. Yeah. Christine, you have a comment on that? I totally agree with that. Mm -hmm. The best police for your body is yourself. Mm -hmm. So a ch you need to trust and teach the child also to trust that they can hear themselves. They can hear what their body is asking mm -hmm. for. for when I'm asking for food, I will be hungry. Mm -hmm. yeah. the, one of the things you can do is just let, let them be. Mm -hmm. Again, put healthy snacks around you. So make sure there's always something healthy to eat mm -hmm. around the child. Give us some example, that um, uh, nutritionist. Uh, pieces of fruit, carrots, maybe a cup of yogurt somewhere nuts. around the house. Depending on the age of the child, nuts, yes. Some put peanut butter. Okay. Okay, yeah. thank you so much. The question had been asked, how long does meat take to be digested at night? Hmm? It, uh, digestion in general, from the time food uh, you eat, it takes on average 35 hours to, for the food to pass out. So that applies to most food, okay. but there are variations. Just the same way there are tall people and the short people. Okay. Some people are faster. <laughs> Some people are slower. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Dan uh, calling us in from Sultan Hamoud. Good evening, Dan. Good evening to you, madam. Thank you, sir. Thank you for calling. Go ahead and ask your question. Yes, uh, I'm watching uh, Hope FM. Hope TV. Thank you. Yes, and I have a question uh, to Dr. Terry. Go ahead. Yeah, I have my daughter who has had a problem and uh, has been, she has been referred to see a, uh, I think, uh, uh, doctor, uh, I mean, uh, what do you, the specialization of the doctor? Gastroenterology. Yes, and uh, she has not yet gone to see him. Uh -huh. Yeah, she has a problem every other time complaining of her stomach. Every other time she complains about her stomach? Yeah, I think she eats some food and uh, possibly they, they may be affecting her. Kind of the doctor also have a thing that there's some food that she's supposed to take. Okay. But let me just quickly I, ask, what, what are the problems she's complaining about in her stomach? Um, she's just having, a, I think, really, we really don't understand that uh, she's been tested for any other disease, uh, infection, and 
it's not there. So they suspected possibly needs to see her, that kind of uh, doctor so that uh, she can uh, be in probably there is some problem with her diet okay. or food she doesn't need to take. Okay, how old is she? He's uh, 10 years. 10 years. Okay, so I will ask the question to the doctor. The doctor to give us the uh, direction of where we can find him or possibly how we can be able to see him. Okay, in so you're in Sultan Hamoud right now, however. Yes, I also want to ask the, the, the nutritionist a question of the best way to reduce weight, how we can be able to advise. Uh, if you want to reduce some kilograms and... Which is the best way to do that? Can you hear that? Okay, sour. I'll ask them all. Thank you so much. I'm sorry about your pieces. Question to nutri nutritionist is how can we reduce weight? Maybe some advice on some things they could eat to reduce weight. And for you, Dr. Dan has a daughter, 10 years old, who has been having a lot of complaints with stomach, has been taken through various tests, and the last conclusion was to go see a gastroenterologist. They're in Sultan Hamoud right now. The child has been having a lot of pain and that's the final result. What would you advise and could you refer them somewhere or can they get a pass to come into the city? Uh, no, the gastroenterologists are available now uh, more widely. Mombasa has a few. In general, a uh, 10-year-old um, yeah. Mm -hmm. A 10 year old uh, child would ideally see a pediatric gastroenterologist. Gastroenterology is divided into uh, pediatric bit and the adult bit. So, mm -hmm. I'm an adult gastroenterologist. There are pediatric ones. There is none in Mombasa, but there are adult ones uh, in Mombasa town. Mm -hmm. And there are several. I know Mombasa Hospital has one, the Aga Khan. So, you can, uh, Dan, you can visit those hospitals and okay. see if you can get some help. Okay. Humphrey mm -hmm. is calling us from Kijabe. Good evening, Humphrey. I'm fine, thank you, doctor. Yes, thank you so much for calling me a doctor. <laughs> he said, I'm fine, thank you, doctor. Ask your question, sir. My name is this. I have a problem of this in this year. I've been struggling with it. Uh, good evening, my, good evening, presenter. Yes, sir, I can hear you. I can hear you. You've been struggling with what? I've been having, I've been having, I've been having this problem of this year over and over for some couple of years. Oh, nausea. New I've uh -huh. struggled with this problem for a couple of years. Uh -huh. uh, sometimes, uh, new year, new year problem. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. And sometimes, I, I was threatened for the pro uh, for the problem of uh, that infra uh, gastro infra. Mm -hmm. Gastro influx. Uh, sometimes uh, I was even threatened for this stomach cancers. Mm -hmm. Uh, sometimes I own, uh, even I sometimes do what we call self self treatment of uh, the warming. Mm -hmm. But this problem is recurrent. Uh, recurrent. Um, every time using this uh, omeso, om omeprazo. Omeprazo. Mm -hmm. The problem is so severe that even I've even resorted to using this garlic or some this some um, like garlic to chewing garlic to reduce the the problem. Hmm. What could be the problem, please? Okay, thank you so much, sir, for calling. Let's uh, give that to the doctor. Dr. our caller is saying he's had a huge problem with nausea, has been diagnosed with uh, gastro influx. Is it correct? Difference. Has been on that medicine I mentioned, May? Mm, meprizone. Yes, meprizone. Mm. And it's just been recurring all the time, and he just wants to know what's the problem. How can he uh, solve this once and for all? Yeah, nausea is a common symptom of mm -hmm. reflux and acidity and sensitivity. Mm -hmm. So what I'd be interested to know is has he been tested? Because if symptoms persist, you need to do a test. And if the reflux was confirmed on testing, mm -hmm. then it's just a matter of understanding that uh, reflux, once it catches you, can stay with you like for a very long time. So your aim oh, is to no. control. Mm -hmm. So is the omeprazole working? Mm -hmm. If not, uh, treatments are that alternatives are available. So uh, maybe if he, we can get more information from him mm -hmm. or he can uh, visit us, he, we can uh, discuss that, mm -hmm. what other treatment options are available. Okay. There are other drugs in the same class, which uh, many times I find omeprazole doesn't work, another one will work. Okay. Mm. Okay. So just get more treatment. He says that they actually diagnosed him with... Uh, with uh... Yeah, if they confirm, because if you you have had this for a long time and the medication is not working, then he needs an endoscopy. Mm -hmm. 
And if it has been done and it confirmed the diagnosis, then he has to understand that um, reflux is a chronic disease okay. many times. So you oh, live no. with it and mm -hmm. control the symptoms. Okay. So with one drug, if it doesn't work, we change and you control with the next one. Okay. So it will not, it doesn't kill. So you sort of just uh, get along. Manage it. Mm. Okay. Mm. Let's look at that management. One is asking, I have gastritis. What foods do I avoid and what foods do I eat? Uh, and what, what is gastritis? Gastritis is uh, inflammation of the stomach lining mm -hmm. and it is uh, commonly because of hyperacidity mm -hmm. and also commonly because of H. pylori. Okay. Yeah, so there are diets that uh, maybe Christine can advise that can help. Kindly. Mm. Of course, we talked about avoid caffeine, stop drinking, stop smoking, avoid food that is too spicy, too fatty. Eat small vegetables. Do not deep fry your food. You'd rather just saute. Saute is what we do in the house. Mm -hmm. You put just a little oil, a bit of onion, and then you put it on heat, mm -hmm. and that is saute. Mm -hmm. So you saute your food. You can bake, b boil, things like that. So no deep frying. Mm -hmm. Again, the other thing we would like to advise is just stay away from anything that is refined, refined sugars. Mm -hmm. Now, refined sugars are these white sticks. Uh, cakes, biscuits, uh, sometimes chapati, mandazi. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because when you eat something that is very high in refined sugar, refined sugar has been shown to increase inflammation. It makes it more, it will make it more painful. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Hey doc, every time I take any food, I feel like vomiting and sometimes I actually do vomit. What could happen? That's Roda in Nakuru. And as you answer that, you can also get on this one. I was diagnosed with H. pylori and was treated and there is no change. That is in 2017. Okay, for the first one of uh, persistent uh, vomiting, mm -hmm. I think the information provided is uh, not enough. So is there pain? Mm -hmm. Is there how much what are you vomiting? Is there blood in the vomit? Mm -hmm. So there's more information we need to see. So Rhoda, could you give us more information? about that if you could do it we have only six minutes to wrap up this episode so quickly send that in for the second one for the second one just remind me uh, the question was, was in 2017 i was diagnosed with, with h pylori. pylori h pylori as we have uh, discussed here has many treatments so i'd like to know what treatment was given okay and was it cleared because sometimes uh, we treat it and uh, you're feeling the symptoms, but we need to check with the test. Usually it's a stool test. Again, what is, 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 is it still there or okay. is it gone? If okay. it's not gone, we have alternative treatments and you should visit your doctor. Okay. They can uh, prescribe something different. So, so. Yeah. So a follow-up needs to be done for that. Yeah. Hello, I'm Esther from Machacos. Thank you for letting us know that Machacos is tuned in. Kindly, I'm asking, whenever I eat wheat products mm -hmm. like chapati, my stomach always bloats. What could be the problem? Again, it could be what we talked about, IBS. Mm -hmm. if a lot of the time we say people who, a lot of people are taking what we call gluten sensitivity and intolerances out of proportion. But mm -hmm. if you feel symptoms and these symptoms go away when you remove this mm -hmm. one particular thing, it's okay to remove it. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Fatma is asking, what are the food that supplements magnesium in the body? Oh my goodness. Now that one you have to go through your dark green leafy vegetables. Dark green leafy vegetables. Your yeah. legumes. Mm -hmm. Again, some meat, mm -hmm. animal products. Mm -hmm. So you now want to strike a balance between your animal and plant. You know when we say animal products, somebody will take it as a license to only eat meat. Yeah. But make Which sure you <laughs> have a strike, a, strike a pause and have one meal with an animal product, one meal with a plant product. Mm -hmm. So maybe lunch or dinner. That okay. would work well. Okay. Mm -hmm. Trying to get all your comments right here on our Facebook page. But we are live, so that keeps playing. Sorry about that. Uh, seeing um, here, Jane Wanjiku, her stool is not back to normal even after she's been treated uh, for H. pylori. What should she take? No, as we said earlier, H. pylori does not cause problems with the stool. So she needs to be assessed. If she has a problem with the stool, she needs to be assessed for the whatever other cause is causing uh, her problem. Okay. Final call of the year uh, of the year <laughs> of the show. <laughs> Steve <laughs> from Ruiru. Uh, Good evening, Steve. Yes, hi, Kagil. Hello, how are you, sir? Good, good, how are you? Fine, thank you. Go ahead and ask your question, sir. Yes, I have a question for the doctor. Yes. 
Uh, I had a problem with uh, my tummy. Uh-huh. I mean, so this pain in my tummy. I mean, kind of sometimes when I ate the pain along the diaphragm area, mm-hmm. I could feel the I mean, it affected the chest and also the back pain. Mm-hmm. There was one he tested for it, and only it was, it was, it was negative mm-hmm. for so many other things. Okay, can you just hold? Let so me take the doctor through the question. He's asking. He had a problem with. Um, did you say you tested for H pylori? Yeah, H pylori. They tested even the kidney, the liver. They were all okay. Okay. My question is: Is there a relationship between the pain in the diaphragm and the back pain? Is there a relation between the pain in the diaphragm and the back pain? Mm-hmm. Wait, Steve. Yes. Hello, please ask your question one more time. I need to say it to the doctor just one more time. Okay, now uh, the pain is still there, the, the back pain. Okay. The, the, the upper, left ba- upper left back. Upper left back pain. Yeah, but also it started from the, sometimes from the tummy aches. Okay, so the when the tummy ache. ache, he has pain in his upper back? Yes, and okay. the chest. And your chest as well? Yes. Okay, so, you've been tested for H. pylori and what else? The liver, they have to test the liver. They have also tested the, the blood, I don't know for what. I'm mm-hmm. not sure those stamps are so mm-hmm. difficult to learn. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so okay, well, what can I do? Well, the back pain is still there, but oh. the tummy ache has gone, but still. Okay. Is that irritation, yeah? Okay, okay. So Stephen has had a uh, stomach pain mm. that he feels has translated to his back pain and uh, to a, a chest pain. The stomach pain is gone, but the back pain is still there. Okay. It's upper back. Oh, there, there are many. What are the there, relations? There, uh, uh, sometimes uh, when you have pain in your stomach and goes to the back, mm-hmm. many times it's because you have a problem with your pancreas. Because the pancreas is at the center in your stomach here, but towards the back. Mm-hmm. So it's, its pain can be felt at the front and going towards the back. And uh, there are other structures also next to the pancreas that can have a problem that can give you this kind of uh, symptoms. Mm-hmm. It is also possible that Steve has uh, just a problem with the, with the back. Had mm-hmm. a problem with the stomach which is sorted out and now has a problem with the, the back, back because there's a whole spine there okay. which needs uh, assessment. So probably the, he can... His doctor needs to reassess him. Yeah. Yeah. He's feeling a bit, you know, he's had a test from blood tests. He's done. He's been tested for it. Pylori, it was negative. Mm. So he needs to go now and see what kind of a doctor. Yeah. Is, if he's in the back, so it depends. If now there is no stomach problem and he's in the back, then we have doctors who deal with the spine. Okay. We call them orthopedic, orthopedic mm-hmm. surgeons. So they can assess and see mm-hmm. and uh, try to establish if there is a problem there or, and, or there's a relationship with the problem mm-hmm. that he had before. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and those are available in uh, the big public hospitals we have. If he is living in Nairobi, Kenyatta, or if he wants uh, all the private hospitals, if he's interested in a private one, they, mm-hmm. they have an orthopedic surgeon. Okay. Mm. Okay, I think I had the same problem, and once they treated me, they checked my amylase and lipase yeah, because yeah. of pain on my hand. Yeah, <laughs> those are pancreatic enzymes, yeah, oh, that we check to see if there's a problem with the pancreas. Okay, Yes. absolutely. Yeah. One is asking, a middle-aged man is asking, he's having gas and his stomach is rumbling. What is he going through? Oh my goodness, he can be going through so, so many, many things. things. Yeah. <laughs> Such a broad spectrum. So yes, yeah. again, the thing we've, we've kept repeating, if you have symptoms that you are unex- unexplainable mm-hmm. and you have... Mm-hmm checked and they are not going away mm-hmm. you see a doctor mm-hmm. and then now again you now take up the advice we were okay. talking about mm-hmm. yeah. there's a question we didn't answer and we must go through it can hemorrhoids cause indigestion that's charles and kasarani the answer is no no yeah. charles yeah. no they cannot you are safe yeah. okay rhoda the rhoda who message from nakuru you asked a backup question when i vomit i have some yellow bitter contents and i have persistent pain in my upper stomach that was the one who was having um, issues from Nakuru, and we had asked a, a follow-up question. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, so could be that she has an ulcer, could be that she has a problem with the pancreas. The, 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 all the organs in the upper stomach here, pancreas, uh, stomach with it, uh, its ulcers, gallbladder, liver, they can all cause uh, pain with vomiting. So the other follow-up I would have wanted to know is what tests has she done, what did they show? 
that we can uh, help her to decide what other tests she needs. Okay. Mm. Okay. We have to wrap this up. I'm sorry. We started at, at 7. We need to wrap it up. Questions are just flowing and flowing and flowing and flowing. So how can guys get in touch with you uh, to get most of their other questions responded to? And what is your final word on these digestive issues? We start with our nutritionist. Fantastic. And you can wrap up as you respond to this one. When I eat bread, I always feel lightheaded. What is the problem? Oh, my. That could be. Okay. And one who wants to reduce 15 kgs, that one just needs a consultation yeah, with you. Yeah, exactly. Okay, how can they find you? Uh, you can check out my Facebook page. Mm -hmm. It is at Mviringo Wellness. You at Mviringo Wellness. Yes. Okay. So just send us a message. We will get back to you. Okay. Mm, also, as I wrap it up, you are what you eat. Wow. This is very basic. You know, sometimes you know, if you're eating a diet, that, have you ever felt as if you're craving something, you want to eat something in particular, mm -hmm. and it's always the same things. Mm -hmm. What you feed in your stomach grows. So you might find that you, you have high high levels of bacteria that like fat. Okay. So they send a message to your brain and tell you, eat more fat mm -hmm. or eat more carbohydrates mm -hmm. or eat more of this. Again, food will affect your mood. So watch yourself. Check that you're eating, eat enough vegetables, eat your fruits, whole grains, drink water, mm -hmm. rest, avoid stress. Mm -hmm. You'll be good. <laughs> Dr. what's your closing remark on the same? Yeah, so uh, my, my advice for public is that digestive health, um, they, uh, there are very many problems in the digestive system mm -hmm. and uh, Many, most of them are things that are easy to treat. There's nothing to be scared about. People scared get scared of coming to hospital because they think they'll find a cancer or they, something like that. Mm -hmm. So they, it's usually if you have a problem, don't fear. Discuss it with your doctor. Most problems are easy to sort out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, occasionally we find one that is difficult, but the earlier you come also, the easier it is for us mm -hmm. to sort out your problem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Thanks. You can Google him, Dr. Stephen Onyango Ayo with a double O. You can get to get all the information. He has been our gastroenterologist, and thank you so much for your time. Uh, thank Steve. you so much, Christine Muturi Gitao, nutritionist, dietitian. Great conversation on digestive disorders. We do this every Tuesday at 7 p.m. There's repeats all through the week. You can go ahead and share this post. We are live on YouTube. If you've not subscribed to our YouTube channel, you are missing out. Great programming right here from Hope TV. From me, it is have a lovely evening. Wash your hands all the time. Sanitize as a supplement to washing your hands, not the vice versa. Please, washing hands with soap is very important. Keep that physical distance like we have and have a lovely, lovely evening. God bless you. Mm. Bye. Say bye. Bye bye. Yes. <laughs> News Watch.